friends that I've known for a while asked me if you can put some boxes inside my um in my stories, right? So we were going through the stuff okay. and it felt really bad. And it's a baby, baby in her. Say bye, Dada. It's a baby in her. I just seen the arm and I just know it's a dead body. On May 15, 2018, police responded to a self-storage facility in Sacramento, California, where, in one of the storage units, sat a box containing a blue plastic barrel, inside which was a duffel bag. In that bag were the remains of a small child who appeared to have been dead for at least two weeks. Monday when it's that big box, whatever that is in there. Okay, with the blue thing in it, yeah. it was Monday. Okay. Yeah. And then later on he brought the stuff that's in the other unit. Yeah, because I, I called them. I go, what's wrong with you, dude? I am so damn suspicious. Your wife, you know, bring a buck. And I told them, they go, if you're trying to get caught, me, you know, because I thought it was drugs. Right. If you're trying to get me caught up or something, you know, because I just pretty good off the road. I'm going to get a bunch of Right. And I threatened him, you know, I go, if there's something that I find in here, or if you're going to get me in trouble, he goes, no, no, I promise you, there's nothing in there. Okay. But he was acting weird, though. And then, okay. the, and then the, to rent a U-Haul with three boxes, that was really weird, too. Okay. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Okay. And then your daughter's the one that convinced you to open up. Yep. Okay. Based on the driver's license information provided by the manager of the storage facility, police set their sight on 23-year-old Tyler Anderson who resides in Reno, Nevada with his 23-year-old wife Avriana. They are soon located and taken into custody, Avriana agreed to talk to the detectives at the station, Tyler on the other hand asks for an attorney and after a year has been passed in July 2019, that Tyler begins to explain his version of events. What you want to talk about, as my father explained earlier, was your recent travel to Sacramento. Okay. okay. Um, so, just in your own words, can you just kind of explain what that's about? Yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact day, but it was the day before yesterday. Okay. What did you guys go down there? What? What, what? what did you guys take down there? Um, um, I think I went to the dresser. Just, just a dresser? During fall of 2013, Tyler got custody of Callie when she was just 13 months old and she began to live with Tyler and Avriana. Come home and they would be playing, you know, they would be, she would teach her how to read, she would teach her how to walk, you know, she's showing her how to cook, vacuuming, right? She has a little vacuum, she's pushing it around, and everyone's showing a lot of love, you know, they, they had a good relationship, you know, and again. And it got, and I, we got her, and she was just a baby, and I just remember looking at her, and I'm like, oh my god, you're so cute. 
And I remember when the first night we got her, I cried. I was holding her and I cried. Because I was just like, she was just a baby, you know. And I just love babies. Mm-hmm. But then she just looked like her dad, you know, and I looked at her and I was like, I'm going to love you, you know, and I'm going to take care of you. Tyler and Avriana got married sometime in 2014 and had their first child in October 2014, it was soon after that Tyler would return home and see visible injuries on Callie's body. Her aunt also contacted CPS to have seen physical abuse and neglect imposed on that little girl. When I asked Avriana how she got it, she says, oh, she bumped her head because she was playing, you know, or she's chasing her brother as she fell. You know, or uh, she's just clumsy like her dad, you know. Things left hand. It was, um, it, it was a ram wrap. It had uh, olive oil and Vaseline on it. That tells me because her and my family are at odds, right? Always. They're on and off, on and off. So she tells me that uh, I have to tell my family that it was my fault, you know, that I was the reason. Because if I don't, then they already think that she's mean to care. So they're going to uh, think that she's abusing them, right? They're too nice, on, they're too soft to their kids, they're too weak, right? Things like that. So uh, we go to a, a get-together, maybe it was the 4th of July, maybe. And then, uh, you know, my aunt asked about the um, her hand injury, and that's why I said uh, I was mopping and then I came in and um, put her hand in the water and got burned. I tell them the same thing, you know. Uh, I was mopping and then she put her hand in the water and then uh, I looked up how to heal a third degree burn, right? I did everything I said. She was good to go, no pain. The fact that Avriana manipulated Tyler into lying to his family and CPS and him favoring his wife over the well being of his own child tells a lot about the dynamic of their relationship. In addition to the potential abuse Tyler's family was also concerned that Callie wasn't fed. His people have said, his family has said that she wasn't eating enough mm. or something like that. And I, I think that's another reason why they called. But why were they saying that? Um, I guess because she was thin. The end result of them checking on you, checking on Everything was fine. They closed the case. They, co- they closed the case because... She clearly wasn't being abused. You guys can't judge a book by its cover, you know, just because I'm a friend doesn't mean I'm abusing my daughter because she's disciplined. And that's what I told the CPS people. They talked to her, looked at her, checked her. Of course, everything was fine. I'm just disciplining her. I'm just little pops, okay? You know, you guys are making it seem like I'm punching her. Or we're not. No, no. No, not you guys. The family, you know, they were making it seem like, oh, I was abusing her. Oh, she's depressed. Oh, they, we need to send CPS over there. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's how that went. It's typical drama. Yeah. But actually the CPS report said it was inconclusive and that Tyler and Avriana were using inappropriate methods of discipline. And then I, and then I get in front of her and I'm holding her on back. You know, she's trying to climb over me to get the kid. And uh, she's telling me, you know, you always save her. You know, you can't always save her. I go to the bathroom, right? And she's in there, uh, and she's on the in Mary's cage. And the first thing I do is get her out of the cage, you know. Uh, what is she doing? She's not crying. She's not crying, and she's not. She's not hurt. She's not bruised, right? You know, what the hell is she doing in this cage? You know, and Ryan said that you know she pushed. The detectives apply more pressure on Avriana as they confront her. So, an important question too, like we've asked and we'll ask, you know, I'm going to ask you, we're going to ask you, where is your daughter? I don't know. Let's see. Well, here's the thing. You told us, you know, earlier, Tyler took her to his people, okay? We know that's not the case. Okay. I didn't know. We know. No, I'm saying, yeah. like, wait, what are you saying? What we're saying is that we know that you and Tyler both took her over to California. So that's why I'm asking. 
You come back here without your daughter? Why don't you come back with your daughter? You come back with... You come back with... But you don't come back with her. Why? Do you guys know? We know about the banks. We know about the barrel. You mean... Know about the storage unit? We know about the storage unit. We know about your trip. Okay. What happened? What happened? That day or that night, what did you say happened? Did he tell you? In the following clips, Tyler begins to explain the chaotic events of that evening. And then she said, you know, there's no money to show you. So I said, what is it? So then she goes in. She brings out in her hands, you know, and in her arms, some five foot, you know, a flint, five foot. And she wanted to breathe her. So I started doing CPR. Try. Try what? Try to help. How did you try to help her? CPR. CPR. Who was doing CPR? Me. You. We both were. We both were. We both were trying. How long did you try? So long. <sighs> try doing stomach compression, you know, trying to force air into her uh, lungs, right? I don't remember how much time went by. <laughs> it's just so long. <sighs> it was unbelievable. I keep trying CPR, you know. I told her it's not working, you know. We need to call an ambulance. You got for so long, my hands are hurting. She said, no, you're not gonna call an ambulance, you know. I can't go to prison, you know. If you call an ambulance, I'm gonna kill you, you know. You have to save your daughter, you know CPR, you know. You're certified, you have a card, you know. You have to save your daughter. I was so upset with Tyler because cause he said he he knew CPR. He said he knew CPR. You know, I talk about, oh, yeah, I got my CPR card or whatever. Did you call anyone? Call 91? Why? Did you call like family or friends? Why not? So I grabbed my phone. I said, I'm going to call the ambulance, and I can't, I can't help her, you know. And she snatches the phone from me. She throws it at the pantry, or at the wall, and it's the pantry, whatever. It hits the floor, and, it, you know, I, I just, I put my ear to her heart, you know, I, I, I thought her and her heart stopped beating, you know. She was dead, you know. I, I don't know, I don't know. There was just a lot going on, but she was, she was dead, you know, and I'm holding her in my arms, and she's dead, you know. So I go, and I, I have a, I have a duffel bag, uh, I put a duffel bag. Who took care of that? Let it be. So you didn't put her in the, in the bag? Mm. Did he tell you what he was going to do? Mm -hmm. Walk us through what was the game plan, or what was the, what, what did you guys come up with? Was it really a plan? She wants to, she wants to burn by under a bridge near a uh, river. She said, matter of fact, I'm just, I should just put the bag in the in the Sacramento River, you know, leave it on the train track, you know, that she said no because. Even if we see it right over by the train, they can still identify her, you know. And she said, no, I'm just going to burn her body, you know, in the house. <clears throat> I tried to take the bag back inside, and she said, no, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not putting that in my house, you know. You're going to keep that with you, you know, so that if you try anything, I'm going to be able to call the police and tell them that you have a body in your trunk. I can't. 
and run away. Tyler's story remain on the same illogical path and the detectives asks why he went to Sacramento on the day Callie's body was found in Joe's storage unit. But what's your, what's your reasoning for going down there on the day you got in custody, okay? Like, don't get caught. I had a strong feeling that he would look at night or the next day because of the bread crumbs that I'm leaving. Right, the suspicions I'm raising, his daughter's worried, right? She's there, so she's wondering what the hell's going on. So, I knew that he would look. I just knew he would look. So you were counting on being caught that day? Yeah. Tyler tries to portray himself as the victim of this situation, but it is clear that he was deeply involved as starvation does not occur overnight. In fact in the CPS investigations confirmed that there were concerns of Callie being malnourished years before her death. Evidence is clear that it was no accident. Meanwhile compelling accounts from witnesses emerged, in early December 2017 Jayla, an old friend of Avriana, traveled to Reno. Jayla's telling us, telling investigators, that she saw your boys in the apartment, but she never saw you. Or was that? in her room. Okay. She had Aaron out of the Aaron out of the she was in the daycare. Oh, yeah. The dog was in the cage in the bathroom. Okay. Did you let her see the dog? No. Uh huh? Because we just got it, and he was mm, not very friendly at that time. You have the kids? Oh, yeah. Maverick? Not, yeah, he's not a vicious dog. No, no, he's not vicious. Not at all. Not at all. He's a little boy. He's so sweet, but he gets a little nervous. So the time that you were at the apartment, Tyler, did you ever, like, ever run? I was sleeping. At all hours of the day? When I was there. But Jayla stayed the night, right? Yeah, she left in the morning. Jayla spoke with the detectives and provided chilling details, of the two bathrooms in the apartment she was only permitted to enter one because they kept their vicious dog locked in the other bathroom, which conflicts with Avriana's previous statement of Maverick being a sweet boy. Jayla also never heard a single dog noise from the bathroom or seen Callie in the apartment. There can be a possibility that Avriana and Tyler kept Callie locked, in the bathroom and sedated her so nobody ever heard a single cry or noise, it is also possible that she was so malnourished that she was unable to make a sound. Tyler tells detectives that shortly after Kali's death they both used cocaine during which Avriana told him the deep horrors happening in their apartment. It is also possible that Tyler knew about the abuse the whole time, but is just telling the detectives to make him look less responsible. And she said that, you know, when I was find, when I was trying to brew the daughter in Reno in Woodland and they ran on the stage, she bumped her head or you know, she fell or she was playing on the brother. They ran and said that she would she would be physically abused at her, you know, and she would she would make her lie to me. And she would put a frozen food or frozen vegetables. She would put frozen vegetables on her. To try to make the bruises go away before I get home. There's all kinds of empty cleaning product bottles in the bathroom across from him. Um, this is used to kind of. That's the clean of my dog's method. All that bleach and cleaning shield, that's for the dog? Yes. Okay. That's the reason why there's all this food and. For the dog? The donuts for the dog? Yeah. As the interview was nearing a close the detective asks Tyler the most disturbing aspect of Callie's condition as the responding officer at the scene of storage facility thought Callie to be an infant when she was actually near her sixth birthday. Very young, like, like months. We're talking. We're talking six months-ish or less. Oh, so definitely born in the life for a while. Oh yeah, wearing a like looks like jammies or something like that. She 
she just, she didn't look sickly to me. She didn't, she wanted a skeleton. So, it's still an ongoing investigation, all right? We as detectives have to do our due diligence for the sake of this entire case, and for the sake of, okay? There's still some things that we need to wait on for the autopsy and things of that nature. But at this moment in time, right now, we're going to go ahead and book you at our county jail, okay? For child neglect. For child neglect, okay? That's going to be your charge. All right? What's that? just want to die. Avriana Enoch pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and Tyler Anderson pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. They both got life in prison with Avriana B. eligible for parole after 20 years and Anderson after 10 years on the murder charges of 5-year-old Callie Anderson.